Yeah. Well, well, speaking of transfer markets and uh, trading to get your cap back in shape, uh, the Brisbane Broncos have stuck with Brody Croft and Anthony Milford. Did that surprise you? I don't know if it's right, to be honest. Yeah. Well, Tom Dearden sitting there. Yeah, look, no, look, he's named Croft and Milford as the, as the seven and six. But certainly uh, today, Dearden did a lot of work as the number seven. And he played a little training. bit of dummy half at training Played a little well. bit of so dummy that, half, that, that played the suggest... 14 role. But I, I think there's probably a little bit of Ducks and Drakes being played by Kevy up Do there. Do they need that. to be playing Ducks and Drakes <laughs> at this point? Well, no. I, I, I'm what not guaranteeing that every decision up there at the moment, Ben's the smart one being... Mate, so. well, I can't believe he didn't won't play. I can't believe he played, didn't play the first two weeks. We got man of the match for South Logan Magpies. That's insane. The Super Cup on the you weekend. Know, they talk all pre-season about this bloke being their future and then they, they stick him in the Queensland Cup. They spent the pre-season two training with him predominantly as the, as the halfback, which is what I found strange. Oh, well, madness is where the Broncos have ended up. <laughs> like, like, that's seriously. a whole show. For, for, whole for, show for decades they were the power club. Mm. Yeah. And now they're just the laughing stock. Well, well, Crawls, in that theme, young Broncos back rower Brendan Percura is being chased hard by the, the Bulldogs and the Titans. Uh, his teammate Pat Carrigan urged Kevy Walters to stay in the fight, though. There's always talk about a wrong young roster here and that sort of thing, but I think the club's doing a massive thing and, and the department in the um, EPD stuff with churning out good quality players that every other club wants. So I think it's really important that we can try and keep Brendy. I stay pretty neutral on these things and obviously tell him I want to keep him, but everyone's got their own reasons and, and he's got to make that decision for himself. But I know Kevy's building something here at the club where everyone wants to be a part of it. What's the key to keeping kids here? Oh, I don't think there's a cultural issue or anything like that. Or, you know, players leave for different reasons than they're all personal reasons. So players leave every club and, um, you know, they happen to be leaving the Bronx at the moment, but I don't think there's a cultural issue. I think when you win footy games, that, that goes a long way to be able to keep in, you know, young kids and young talents at the club because they want to be a part of it. So, Brendan Percour is a very talented young back rower who played in the Australian schoolboy side of 2019 uh, in the same team that Sam Walker and other few uh, great young players were part of. Uh, but the Broncos, it's been reported today, have come out and tabled an offer to Percour of $1.2 million dollars over three years. That's what it's got to for a young man that is yet oh, to craziness. play NRL. That's craziness, Ben. Look, I, what I drives get, that? Well, what drives that is panic. That they've lost the feeder, they've lost Reese Walsh, that, the, that this guy who's considered a very, potentially a very, very good player. But gee, I tell you what, don't we see a lot of money spent on potential? Well, because today it was announced that Jordan Rickey has just extended yeah. for three years, so they would have had to spend a whack to keep him because he can play. Mm. You know, and this is in the same side that's got Pat Carrigan, Ethan Bullymore, Tom Flegler, Payne Haas, Matt Lodge, Davida Pangai Jr., Reese Kennedy, John Asiata, and Corey Oates, who to wants to play. Ben, in the I force. don't know if there is a plan. I, I can't see a plan in the Broncos' recruitment. It's almost like they're. When clubs go from. Uh, strong clubs to the mediocre clubs to the weak clubs, you see it go in their planning stages. That they don't have the discipline to let players go, that they don't have the discipline to hold play players at a certain price. And there's no, uh, I suppose, binding plan that you can see, okay, they've got this guy here, so they've got that guy there, they're, they're pushing it all through together. They're just grabbing whatever they can, Because there's, so much, they there's can. so much good stuff coming off the assembly line in what they call their elite player development unit. So they spot them, they develop them, and so the, well, the talent pool man, runs so deep. To, to be fair to them, they're responding to Canterbury making an offer to them, and they're just trying to keep a But if you haven't got a plan, system. that's what you do, you react, but don't this you? Is, yeah. This yeah. was always, really, the Broncos' strength was was keeping guys because they wanted to play yeah. for the Broncos. Like people want to play for the Roosters or people want to play for the Melbourne Storm. They always had the depth in their system. And, 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 and then at the moment, too many kids are getting pushed through before their time. And the other like, thing with the Broncos too is by the time Canterbury arrived with this offer to Pierre Cora, they would have already had a value on him, the Broncos, and they would have just looked at the Canterbury offer and said, mate, we can't, we can't match that go. Or, OK, We've already, we've already tabled our offer, and, which is competitive. But what they did is they went away, saw how much money they had sitting there in the cap, and came back and said, OK, we'll give you $1.2 so like million. didn't happen in the he past. He hasn't Stephen, played like, a game yet. About Lottie De Kiri, when, it, when he went to Rugby Union, the reason was because the Broncos couldn't keep him. Wendell Sailor, exactly yeah. the same reason. Israel Folau. Yeah. Go.